cusp of kickoff here. Packed out stadium, which is wonderful to see. Of course, they play at Ernest Vallon, but tonight it's at the stadium. They just thought, oh, well, we're going to make it full. We're going <laughs> to... That's a um, uh, French comedian. Artia. And uh, Adrian Marbo is the man in uh, charge tonight as we get this game off the ground. Dan Bigger with the ball in hand, ready to... Kick it high up into the sky to see exactly where Toulon head off in this encounter. Perfectly taken by Kinghorn at the back. On to Adupon, it's uh, been charged down. Picked up by Aki Aki with Ramos with a, a quick clearance kick. He does enough to get rid of it, but um, under a little bit of pressure there from the Toulon defence. Yeah, well played by Toulon there. No protection in front of the kicker there, and uh, that's something they've been uh, in France trying to, you know, sending out messages, the referees, not to place someone in front. We saw that in the World Cup. Most teams, the nine would be protected. And there, that was Rabaz straight onto that one there. So well played. Good presence around the ruck, but uh, again, uh, Ramos, great clearance kick under pressure. Perfectly taken off the chop. Excellent play there from uh, David Ribbons. Six foot eight, of course, the uh, the English international, originally from South Africa. Is the ball going back? Well, it's a bit of a bit of a mistake there from Matthias Smaley. His pass not going to play it. Picks up there by Ben White. Your yacht up against his former teammates there. Cross doing the. Knock on back at that, it's a yeah. knock-on from the, uh, the line-out, isn't it? Uh, no, knock-on at the breakdown there by White. It was a touch judge's call there. Interesting setup there from the first line-out. They opted for the midfield hit to lose, and then a switch back on the blind side. As we'll see, the, well, we won't see it from this angle where the knock-on. That was the carry from uh, Tolafua initially. And then they were switching back, and here's the little knock-on here. The ref didn't see there. But there was a touch judge call. He had his back turned. Thought he'd got away with one, but no. Touch judges on it. The assistant referee giving the call early. I hope he's not going to be involved too much tonight, and it's uh, we get a pretty uh, free-flowing affair. I'm trying to pump. Aki's been a great performer, hasn't he, for Toulouse since his arrival? He's been what, probably three years now, I think, maybe. Um, but he's been really solid. His, I, I think you notice him when he's not there with Toulouse. He's at the heart of everything. <laughs> Off the back goes that man, Rumat. He's such a great ball carrier. Doesn't go down easily. There's Ramos with the uh, the kick down. The bounce falls very kindly. And uh, Marius Dormont just uh, slams it up to the edge of the 22. Little fumble by Ramos, but he... Fires his kick up, picked up by Bigger, not under any pressure. And it's not the ideal kick into touch from the Welshman. Really unhappy there, Bigger, and he's gesticulating you know, wildly as we know he can do. This is Rumat carrying, but the backfield cover after Dumont's kick, he went off and chased it downfield and should have probably held in his cover back there in the backfield. There was too much space there, and uh, yeah, I can understand Bigger's frustration there with his young fullback. They really want to get their communication sorted out as the referee. He needs to get his stuff sorted out as well. But uh, really untidy play there from Toulouse, uh, rather too long with their backfield organisation. There's no way a kick should be bouncing in your 22 from, um, you know, from 22 to 22. That's pretty poor, foot, you know, pretty poor start by them. And uh, we saw Bigger expressing himself during the World Cup, didn't he? You know, upset with George North, if I seem to remember, and uh, not kicking the ball out. Uh, Liam Williams. Up. Liam Williams, sorry. And there is... Uh, it's a good thing I've got the French, uh, the Welsh expert. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember that. There was a very upsetting moment, wasn't it? Playing in your own backyard. Um, here is the line-out. Rivens does well, redeems himself. Comes off the... Comes off the leg, but also comes off the hands there. Now, Smelly's made a horrible pass earlier into no man's land, and he's now just fumbled. But look at that, that's great work. Rumat is an absolute genius in the lineup. He is most definitely one of their top players. 
Young gun coming from uh, Union Bordeaux Begle, of course, and what he does in the line out is sensational. On that occasion, it was great to see uh, that he's he can't get everything for free. No, no, no. And uh, ribbons, he'll be, he'll be, you know, putting, you know, what is he, six foot eight? He'll be putting, the, he'll be putting immense pressure on him at the line out. They'll be tracking him. They will have studied the line outs during, uh, in the, you know, build up to this game. And uh, I'm sure Rumat is the guy that they've targeted as the key guy in line out, both attack defence for this uh, Toulouse outfit. You also got to think about that, that, that small chap, Richie Arnold, as well. At times, goes okay. <laughs> <laughs> Toulouse coming off the back of two uh, fine wins in Europe, of course, 52-7 here in Toulouse, uh, beating Cardiff. And then the 1947 win against Harlequins um, in England, which is a pretty impressive result, to say the least. So yeah, that, certainly on the back of Harlequins winning in, um, in racing. And, the, and I think that one there is really sent as the one has got everyone sitting up and talking, hasn't it? Well, absolutely. And, you know, it, it makes complete and utter sense. And it was great to see Pierre-Louis Barassi getting a couple of tries as well because he is a wonderful player. And uh, I think that he's st there's still a lot of rugby for him to play. He really wants to, to try and find his place because as an outside centre and what he does is, uh, is, is top-notch offloads, passing, running. Rumat has been uh, targeted here quite quickly. And that's good counter-rucking, that is. Look at your yards up against his former teammates, as I said before. Kinghorn pushed back. And Dupont just tidies things up. Oh, has that been kept in? That's a very nice, slick piece of rugby. Oh, I think they'll want to have a look at this again, probably, but... Uh... I think he went out, I think he... I think he played it on the other side of the line. We'll just get to see it now. Yeah, his foot was on the line. Goodness me. What is the touch that's not seen there? <laughs> Hugo Moller's seen it from the other side of the field, apparently. There we go. Well, he's gone five metres deeper than where the ball went out. Goodness me, he's having an absolute shocker. Anyway, great attacking opportunity. We'll see if the referee brings us back because he's taking us five minutes. No, he's saying it's not a 50-22 because it was outside of the halfway line. It was inside of the half, but uh, the ball was out at that point. So it's actually too long to get possession. Yeah. Well, I've got that one right. Great defence though, wasn't it, from the scrum. First of all, the initial scrum by Toulon was outstanding. Great pressure coming through. Yacht did really well there, Olivon. And as well, Ben White involved, putting Dupont under pressure. But such class from Dupont, just to be able to bounce out onto his left foot, calm it down, and then put the pressure back on the Toulon line-out. Perfectly taken there by Swan Rabaj. Swan Rabaj into the hands of Salavasio Tolafua. Another former Toulousean, of course, before he headed down to the Rad. Just like uh, that man, Yannick Yoyot. Miafu just coming a little bit quick out of the blocks. The clearance kick is good. Well, the Belgian came an extra few meters, they're always up to it. I don't think Ben White understood one word of what we've been told <laughs> him, but he's been told he's got to hurry up, basically. Faster, faster. Opportunity here to play. Bigger getting the ball out, that's nicely done. Oh, as Villiers unable to get that kick past uh, Kinghorn. It's been kicked down, that's gone out of play. It'll be a Toulon line out. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's what Villiers does. He, he, he's capable of doing that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. He's a little bit well, lucky. Was, you, you, you did right. It, it, he's always trying to create something. You just feel like the, the kick option there by him was pretty poor. And go to contact, and let's just build the phases, build the pressure. But he, he's looking to create something the whole time. I, I like the quick, quick line-out option. They've got to play. They've got to show up and play here tonight and not sit back and wait. Because when you do that against Toulouse, you suffer. And, uh, yeah, they're showing good intentions early here. Aggressive defence. And now they've just got to start carrying the ball hard. Here's Tolafour. Tolafour with the charge. A little bit of back up there with Olive on. The ball comes out white. Dan Bigger. Rubens takes the ball forward. Good carry there. 
Le ballon est disponible de suite. C'est vous qui le remettez dessus. Rubens makes it available. Setiano. Oh, it's a big, big crash course into the traffic there by Dormont. Prizo, Prizo, he's got three of his of his uh, forward. defender. That looked like it was forward into the hands of your yachts. They go again. There's White. This time it's uh, Prizo once again. They're going out around the outside. Watch out for the Fiji and the offload. Oh, that's a good offload into the hands of that man, Fanga Anuku. Oh, picks up. Look at the acceleration. And Matthias Smaley redeeming himself for a couple of mistakes earlier. All smiles. And uh, in the 10th minute, the inside center producing a sparkling bit of acceleration. Priso, absolutely amazing there as well in that fine move for Toulon. They take first blood. Well, they've done it with great you know, a bit concerned about Antoine Dupont, how he went down and that tackle there on Dumont. And uh, we just see Yuyot there, strong carry. And then it was, well, cut away from the uh, replay there, but it was... Um Faya Kanuka did uh, outstandingly well, but it was before him. I think it was in the hands of the centre there, uh, Tunikuvu, and did extremely well with very quick hands to the outside. Smiley did amazingly well to pick that up off his bootlaces. Excellent try, but just good intentions to play. Had the players, they held their width in the attack. Well, that's taken a little bit of a out, the sting out of the crowd early, hasn't it? See, does really well here, breaking to the outside. Good hands on the outside. This is outstanding play from Leicester there. Works it back, no knock on. Tipped it on. Smiley under the sticks, well played. Good rugby, good rugby to start with here. And uh, seven point lead for the visitors. And uh, a good exit kick there from inside of the 22, Dupont. Uh, it's funny, Dupont, um, this, this season has been, I mean, post World Cup I'm talking about because we haven't seen him in the top 14. Um, he, he just hasn't been firing at 100%. And I don't know if he's been, you know, affected. I mean, everybody, every French player has been affected by the way that they were ex, you know, uh, chucked out of the Rugby World Cup on the, in their own backyard. But you still expect them to shine and, and produce the goods when they're playing. Top 14, top capitals hasn't been top notch for some of the French players. Here we go with Ramos. Let's see what they do now. Good bit of charging running through there from Barassi. Dupont. Rumat picks it up. Look how quick they're off the line. Fantastic. Charging up there from Chris Tolafua. Spillage. And that is going to be picked up. And it's going to be a scrum for Toulon. No, there certainly has been a lot of hangover, and that's been a lot of it's probably been created within the media and the pressure on the players as well. And, uh, you know, essentially they've got knocked out of a quarter final, and um, you know, they've, they've really got to move on from that pretty quickly. I'm not sure some of the players have, or they've been allowed to, uh, because there was such high expectation in France around this uh, French side, and uh, I think that expectation was well deserved because they performed so well. But it's. Um, now it's back to business, it's been back to Champions Cup, it's been back to top 14 as we see Sergio Parisi trying to work out what's going on out there with his team. But I think from a Toulon perspective, and he looks after the line-out side of things, he'd be delighted with the way his team started here tonight. You know, it's been a very good first 12 minutes. And, um, you know, often we'd say when you go ever go to play against Toulouse is you've got to be in the game after 20 minutes. You can't let them get in behind you. And at the moment, Toulouse aren't getting a foothold. 25-year-old former Leicester Tigers scrum half, and uh, that's going to be a scrum. I think that the bind was was lost there, and it was uh, but finally, I think it was Lola who had a bit of an issue. And, and this is what, you know, this is going to be the big challenge for Lola is adapting to the top 14 scrum agenda, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, before uh, Charlie Farmawina spent years at Toulouse, I'm sure he'd be able to give him some really sound advice as to things to look for, and uh, tendencies with certain props and things like that. It's not the same game, the scrummaging in France, and it's always a massive challenge for any prop, no matter how good coming, as we just see here, completely no bind at all from him. Prizo's not even bound. That sort of thing's just not going to happen in the, uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, but uh, it's going to be refereed differently here, and it's up to him to adapt to that really quickly. And uh, knowing the intelligence of the player and uh, you know, his incredible experience, I'm sure he'll get on, get on top of it pretty quickly. Thibaut Flam on there with Dorian Aldegheri just uh, watching on. Both uh, out injured. Well, there's an opportunity. Look at this. This is the way that he skips and dances. Tuakuru 
Wonderful player, Vijian. Already scored four tries for Toulon this season. Still edging towards the uh, 22. White gets the ball out. An opportunity, just cuts inside. Nice and neatly done, making the ball available. Forwards getting involved. Toulon very uh, hungry to get themselves... Uh, good possession, good, uh, good ball. It's a knock on by Dumont, but really good build up. Really interesting to see that they're targeting getting back at the short side every time. Well, not every time to the short side. They carry two plays to the open, then switching it back to the right side. They obviously feel this is two times they've run it from set play. And again, they're getting, getting some quite good mismatches on the blind yeah. side there, which is exactly what they're looking for. Because as you said, they've got such good ball carriers. Good feet, you know, they've got a, a real good balance of ball carriers in their team. They've got the real power through Prizo, through Olivon. Um, who else has carried already well? Uh, Ribbons has carried yeah, really well. Your yachts has carried yep. the ball well. They've carried the ball. So they've got that strong power carrier. And then they've got the really good feet and the types of fun of Fanganuka as well on the wing. Yep. Really good options across the field. And they seem to obviously be wanting to maybe hit the same way once or twice and then bounce it back to the blind side and thinking they're going to get some uh, mileage Next there, which they have done thus far. You know, I talk about Dupont. When I mentioned yeah. Dupont earlier, I was talking about top Cator's, not not the not the Champions Cup because he was, you know, uh, outstanding. You know, the last couple of matches that, that they played, of course, and he was, um, you know, playing rugby straight out of the top draw as per usual. It's just the top Cator's where it's just not been it's been stop start. We haven't really seen him like a wow. The wow element of his game hasn't been introduced into the top Cator's, and I don't know what it is. You know, maybe he's still. Got that mindset on playing against, you know, uh, foreign teams, which basically brings back, you know, the the buzz of playing, you know, uh, on the international stage. I don't know, but in any case, um, it would be it'd be great to see Antoine Dupont produce, you know, a, a five-star performance tonight in the top catalogs just before Christmas. Yeah, no one from Toulon is going to be agreeing with you on that. No, absolutely <laughs> no one. Is it White's got him under pressure here? Oh, he's under a lot this of is pressure, isn't he? Right now. Can they get through it? No. Well done, Dupont, so strong as always. It's good work, though, from, uh, from Ben White, the, the Scottish international, former London Irish player. Worrying signs, though, for Toulouse with the way they're scrummaging at the moment. There's nothing clean at the back. That's three now that they've, uh, they've been under pressure on each scrum and they've been penalised in the other one. So um, they will really want to get, find, try and find some answers there quickly. That's going to be a line-out for Toulouse. There was uh, contacts from a... I think it was David Rubens again, who's, who's just getting himself in the way. He's being that annoying, annoying lock, isn't it, who's just getting in the way. And uh, trying to block every clearance kick possible. Well, again, it's something they would have targeted, and they're, they're getting their big men in around the rucks uh, with um, uh, Rabage and Ribbons there, just getting them on either side of the ruck to put pressure on both left and right foot. And now the line-out's gone to pop. Tolafau, great carry. Tolafua, rather. Ben White just uh, ducking and, and stooping into the, uh, the Toulouse defence. Ribbons takes it forward. There's Priso. Which option is, are they going to take? It's a little bit threadbare on the left side. Right side is good to go. You know, they've also got the chance to, uh, you know, just pop it back into the box for, for Dan Bigger for a drop goal because he's... Uh, he's He's fully capable of that as well, but at the moment it's a running game that they want to play. Smaley just taking the ball, still going. God, he's very talented, very keen to stay on his feet, does really well. It's Tolafour once again, very low charge. And uh, the Dortmund one getting involved. Need to get it up and out. There's Ben White. And Rumat Schulte let go of the tackle player. There's the drop goal, and it's Dan Bigger, but I think it's gone wide. So that was a good option, but it was a little bit tight and congested in there. Didn't really have time to set. He probably didn't give himself the depth that he would like to have, but again, we could see the style of play that they were wanting to, it's these, you know, just hit the same way, hit the same way, the big carriers, and there he was, too tight. He knew an off, missed an occasion there, but White was taken out. He was already on the ground the other ruck, so he was relying on, uh, I think it was... Um, Tui Kanuvu was making the pass there, who better suited to making passes in the middle of the field, probably not at the base of the ruck. Yeah, it's also good to have a little bit of protection in that area as well. And he didn't really get that. Pietro uh, Movaka was quick to get out. You're in an offside position, Mr. Arnold. Oh, 
He's calling the knock on there by King Horn. I didn't think he got hands onto that one. But anyway, it's all going uh, to Lawn's way at the moment, isn't it? Well, and you know, and that, and that can turn around. I think that you know, as soon as the fans start to get behind their team, that we know what they're capable of doing. And but it's know, got it's to be, it's got to be on the back of you know, you, you're thinking, what's going to be on the back of solid set piece? No, it's a great call by the referee. Got that one spot on. There you go, off the off left the shoulder. shoulder of King Horn. But it's it's not going to be on the back of their scrum at the moment. Their lineout's faulted. It's just you know, Mavaka missed the last. Yeah. Hit the overthrow earlier. And now, you know, Toulon just got to see them just keep building pressure. Olivon decided they haven't uh, contested that one, but around the side, arcing around the side, it's Cholofua. Gets brought down by Movaka. Oh, that's a really strong, really strong play. Big boys getting involved. There's Setiano. Oh, he's nearly close to the line. That's excellent play from Danny Priso. And the forwards going a bit of pick and go just around the side of the protection on the post. And it's over and grounded. David Ribbons just makes sure that that is down. And some fantastic play. There were two players who were crashing it down. And that was Celavasio Tolafua, the big number eight, with a little bit of support, a little bit, I should say, a lot from David Ribbons. Direct, in your face, you've got to stop us. And this is what they've brought tonight. And uh, Tolafua, he's had time, had a lot of, you know, had a lot of time in uh, Toulon, uh, Toulouse rather. Great carry off the back, and this is just, you know, no nonsense rugby. Strong carries in here, around the goalposts in the old days. Of course, you could score it the old days. A year ago, you could score it again. Two years ago, you could score against the goalposts, <laughs> but that's not the case anymore. Spun around, 14 zip. The crowd is out of the game. Where is this energy going to come from that they need? They need to get a spark. Firstly, they've got to get their hands back on the ball. First try of the season for Celerasio and Cholofua. Oh dear, straight oh out. dear, straight out. Ramos, you know, when Ramos is not kicking well, we know that there's something wrong within the group. Hugo Mola watches on, hoping that this is not too serious. But it's 20 minutes in, you know, this is a quarter of the game that's already behind us. And Toulon are just orchestrating things. They're just doing everything right. and They're not making mistakes, but they're getting possession. They've got the ball in hand. They've come in with a really clear game plan <laughs> in how they're going to try and attack this uh, Toulon to, uh, Toulouse team. And they've done it on the back of really solid set piece so far. And, you know, Prizo's been outstanding in the loose and the tight. They've all, been, they've all had great touches. They've all had good moments in the first 20 minutes. You've got to stay in this game, though, you know. Playing against Toulouse, you've got to be in it for 80. But um, first 20 gone by, and uh, they'll be, yeah, they're looking for answers there on the Toulouse sideline. And uh, if you're too long here, you've really got to go um, put the pressure on through the scrum. Try and win a penalty here at scrum time. Sounds a little bit negative, but I think it's, you know, it's, it's just about really turning the screw now. And they know they've got the wood on them at scrum time. They've really got to go. Wow, that's a big scrum, that There's is. And they've got the advantage as well. White gets the ball out. There's uh, uh, Domon once again. Just uh, putting himself on the line, the youngster, and this is really positive. And that's how um, we go back to the original infringement. Great scrum success there that was for, um, for Toulon. Dan Big is going to smash it down into the corner. It's probably just a little bit out of range. I like this option. Just keep the pressure. Just keep turning the screw. Put, keep putting the doubt in the mind of uh, of this Toulouse side. And um, I'm really surprised by the physical presence that they've, that they've shown in the first 20 minutes. I, I really thought Toulouse would have the number on them up front. But, um, well, not the case. Toulon, outstanding first 20 minutes. But they're looking very composed, and they're also they're not allowing Toulouse to get up in their own half. You know, they, 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 how, no how much time have they spent on none. Chris Tolafua. Into the line out it goes. Ribbons once again. There's uh, uh, Swan Rabaj back to uh, Tolafua. Chopped in two there by a very hungry Anthony Gelon. Gelon's been transparent so far tonight. Another ball made available. They're going out to the right hand side this time. Dan Bigger getting involved. Just cuts inside. Gelon's trying to get his hands on that. He gets shoved off. 
Complaints to the referee, we get going again. White. Setiano this time. White gets the ball out. Well, it's a good bit of work for... Uh, it's uh, Miafu was quick to get down there, but no, it's not Miafu, I don't think. I think it's uh, Barassi, isn't it, who's getting a little bit of the He's getting the a tap on that. the head for that one, but Toulouse coming, uh, Toulon coming with connected carries there into the tackle area. Really trying to secure the ball there. Geelong claiming the penalty earlier. There's no way he had, right, had rights to get a penalty on that one. But Toulon to keep building this pressure. Yeah, just see Ribbons there fell over. He was the principal guy who was going to clean out, and that just got untidy. And if they're not clean at the breakdown, the referee is going to give the advantage to the defending team. So they've got to be really accurate with what they're doing, the, uh, the Toulon attack. And just unfortunately, well, here's the chance now for Toulouse to get some, a foothold in the game. Great ball. Excellent opportunity here. Look at the running line here from uh, that man, Delibas. He's such a strong runner. The ball comes out. Ramos into the hands of Aki. They've got the advantage here. Toulouse. A little bit better. Antoine Dupont tries to get the ball out. Manny and Miafu. Five metres out. Dupont digs for the ball. Gets it back out. Picked up by Lulala. Got the advantage uh, going their way. Dupont Big gets numbers. the ball back out now if they can find themselves. That's a great ball. That's surely going to be a try. And it is that man, Dimitri Talib. Scores down there in the corner. Unchallenged in a pretty lots of space. And that's a fine score for Toulouse, who hit back in the 25th minute. Good use of the pitch, good use of the flanks, but the passing meticulously done. And quick ball there from Dupont. I think it was our key, was the key pass here, was it? Drifted off on the pass there from Ramos, drifted off beautifully, put them out into the space here. They were able to continue the same way. He's good hands on the outside, strong carry here from Miafu. Well, you'd expect nothing less from the Giant. And then it was just that huge number stacking up. Ramos read it beautifully. And that's well played there. Throwing that pass out was Kinghorn. Beautiful pass off the left hand to put him over for the try. And Delbiès does very well to finish that one. And, uh, well... We weren't writing them off, but we were wondering when they were going to come into the game, and bang, yeah, you're happy with that one as a manager. Outstanding try from Toulouse, and uh, if, if Toulon needed a reminder just how good they can be, they got it just there. You've got to be accurate. You've got to maintain your concentration. You've got to maintain your discipline in defence and just keep on working and hold the line. Otherwise, the moment they get in behind you, that's when they just rip you apart, and that was uh, you know, an outstanding team try. Allez, on se fout le réveil maintenant, c'est parti Ramos pulling it wide. Van Sinclair with the family and a big smile. There it is, the hierarchy. Handled twice in that movement. Spoke before the game about his importance. And that's Kinghorn there putting it out to the left. Really well worked. They had all the backs had reloaded. They'd all stacked up on the right-hand side. Great work off the ball by the Toulouse back line on that try. Created the mismatches. Well taken. Some shrewd business from Toulouse bringing in player Kinghorn just off the back of Melvin Chamonix. Oh, it's a chance it's down. It's want. going to be a... No, it's uh, Ooh, being grounded speed. there. Did really well, Dimitri Delibius, just to uh, get himself on the ball. Under a lot of pressure from the very sneaky, fast and, and fleet-footed Gabin Villiers. That's the third charge down tonight, and that's something they'll be wanting to really address that one at halftime. Two on Dupont, this is the first one on Ramos, and G does well there the year. Outstanding pressure, and now you know your scrum is uh, creaking. This is the perfect way for uh, too long to hit back. And again, it's going to have to be putting real pressure on Laulala through Prizo. And if we look for Tolafu, if they get that advantage, if they get the site go forward, Tolafu will be charging off the back of the scrum and looking to get amongst this... Uh, to lose back line. Yeah, yeah, that's the way to be. Yeah, Dan Bigger's pointing them the way to the try line. <laughs> Let's see if they can back it up. There's a lot of speed, there's a lot of strength just behind this scrum. Watch out for Tonafua peeling off the back. Oh, it's going against the Toulon pack. And this time you can see it's Emmerich Setiano who's just uh, collapsed under the pressure. 
Well, he's got he's got Setiano putting his knee down on the ground, and uh, from our side there, it did look as though it, it had, he had gone to ground very quickly. First scrum penalty against them tonight, and uh, not the greatest time to give it away because they've let them off the hook there. As we just see it here on this side, the knee's on the ground right from the very start. And they haven't managed that scrum at all well. You know, been so dominant in this field tonight, and Mignoni knows it as well. That's disappointing. Laurent Emanuele in the middle. Just getting the numbers right for this uh, line out to Mr. Marbo. Just uh, making sure that we don't have one extra player in the line out. Let's see where this is going to go. Piatto Movaca, French international hooker. Oh, dear. oh it's uh, not That's straight at all, is it? And I think they confused issue. themselves there. Who was playing? Who was the uh, first receiver? Who was the receiver off the line out there? One moment it was at the front of the line out. Then it was Laulalo dropped out of the line out. They weren't quite sure what was going on. Too much movement. Not clear in their communication. Bang. Big mistake. As a come of the, these have been the misfires uh, from the game thus far. Two overthrows. Three overthrows. And a not straight. Well, the referee's staying on the tight head side here for too long, so he'll be wanting to watch see if Setiano holds it up correctly this time around. I'm sure the backs want to get their hands on the ball here. Oh, he's gone down again. So we've got line outs which are an issue for Toulouse, we've got scrums that are an issue for Toulon. Setiano again, he's not getting his um, his body position in the right place. Well, this is Emmerich Setiano against Rodrigue Netti. Well, it seemed, but it seemed, to, it seemed to be very comfortable, you know, for the first uh, the first 28 minutes of the game. Now two scrums in a row penalty. Next one will be yellow card without a doubt. So now the pressure, the scrum pressure was all on to lose. Now they've managed to turn that around. Let's see if they can get their line out sorted. We'll just see here. The knee's gone straight down. Again, it was. I'm not going to suggest what the answer is. I'm disappointed, Simon. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> we no, can make no, a no, phone no, call no, if you want. No, no, <laughs> Here we go. It's Toulouse from the line out. This time it's straight and short, and it's that man, Movaca, at the back. Uh, there's Dupont. He's got a little bit of extra assistance. The cavalry arrived. Dupont wants to get it in his hand. Uh, they're still Check. waiting. Oh, he's under pressure, sure, sure, and he's been caught out by ribbons. But I think there's a penalty advantage for Toulouse, and I don't think that's going to come out. So the whistle's going to be blown. So they've got a free ball here. They nope. want to have a crack. They want to try something. Ramos gets it out into the hands of that man, Ruma. Ramos, oh, just caught up under the foot. Ramos still going. White brings him down to lose on the front foot, but there's no serious advantage here. Go back to the penalty advantage. Yeah, it was an easy penalty for the referee. Yeah, there were the... Uh, was ribbons there were two or three others who changed their bind about five times before he actually gave the advantage and defending them all once you're in that position if you're defending the driving more you're not allowed to change the position of your arms change your grip so they'll try and hold in there and we'll just see the arms there ribbons coming through we'll see all sorts of then another change having another go you're not allowed to do that so uh, quite easy for the referee to make the call quite easy for uh, Toulouse to go for the five meter line out as well let's see if they can hit the marker 73% possession all around the outside has been picked up by that man, Gelon. Gelon, the ball just spills out onto the ground. Picked up once again, taken forward by Murfu. Biggest guys, uh, the colossal giant. Uh, Charles Olivon down on the ground holding his head for Toulon at the moment. He's not in a good place. I think he bashed his nose. I don't know what it is. Dupont gets the ball out. They go again. Driving forward, a couple of metres shy of the try line. Toulouse looking for their second try. Dupont gets it out. Movaka, he finds a way through. He always finds a way through. There's your try. He's such an astonishingly strong hooker. And he'll always weave, but also burrow and drill his way through any defensive line. And that was a fantastic score there for Pietro Movaka, the French international. Really well played there by this Toulouse side. Strong carries close to the right. Good line out, well worked initially. It's a peel off with, uh, I think it was Francois Cano, it was Geelong carrying the ball there. 
surprised DuPont didn't take that on himself. Usually he would have. That's where it was. But I suppose you got Mierfeld there. You're going to use him. And he's the guy who caused the problems for Olivon. But just watch the feet before contact. That's what makes the difference. And that's, you know, the sign of you know, the high-quality international players. It's just those small steps before contact. The acceleration through the tackle. These are the things that, you know, powerful athletes have. And uh, Mavuka's got it all. We know that. Can be a little bit ill-disciplined in some of the more technical stuff that he needs to do uh, to be that high, high-end quality international player. But in terms of uh, athletic ability, how explosive he is, great feet. He, he's, he really has got the whole package and uh, just showed it there against a defensive line that was set. Roman Tamak. And this is uh, Olivon's getting that uh, little bit of bandage strapping. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now we understand a little bit more about um, what happened there. Yeah. He had a big bash. 45 oh, kilos running yeah. to you. Okay. It's Mia Fu on the, on the face. You can see that. Oh, he can't, no, oh he he's the got boot. the boots. It's, it's the boots. It's the boots are the ones that really cause there the problem. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big gash to the, to the forehead. That is a look, isn't it? There you go, just grin and take it on the chin and move on. And get on with it, you've got six minutes, um, you know, to hold out. You really don't want to let uh, Toulouse back in for any more points before halftime. They've got to get to halftime without conceding another score, in my opinion, to stay in this game. Yeah, and I think that that's a psychological thing as well. Totally. It's not just about, uh, there's Barassi getting the ball out, Kinghorn, Kinghorn with a lovely kick off that left foot of his. Um, it's been uh, tidied up, well, just uh, controlled. And there's your clearance kick there coming from Mario Storm on the 21 year old, the sevens player. And uh, the ball's gone deep. And there's Ramos it, uh, firing it up into the uh, 22 again. He's got a good kick on him, Mario Storm, hasn't he? Beautiful strike, that one. Well played. Much better control of the backfield there. Didn't go chasing after his own kick. They held two players back, covered the ground. And Dumont's done very well there. Yeah, Pierre Mignoni would be very content with that clearance kick uh, it's just the way you just had a little bit of time uh, but it, the the way that you just you know go through the mechanics of a good kick you can see that is the the full follow through just basically meant that it was gonna go flying into touch and get him get them outside of their own half which is exactly where they are now um oh that's uh, an Another absolute shambolic line out oh oh uh, that's a bit of a wild pass It'll but it's been picked up there by uh, Dorman once again very active, no more advantage being played. Dan Bigger playing number nine. White back into position, Smiley. Well, that's uh, it's knocked on. It's a knock on. He's dropped that, he's taken the ball and he's dropped it, uh, Richie Arnold. There'll be a scrum for Toulon, logically. I actually, I actually think there was probably a knock on back of the lineup by Toulon. They were so surprised to see that the ball fall on their side, yeah. weren't they? You know, such a poor throw. Massive miscommunications going on in the lineouts here for uh, to lose tonight, as we see. And then just so that's a really speculative pass. And uh, I thought they, you know, it was a really surprised Leicester didn't stay on the outside there, fucking the good to take up that space on the outside. And there's the knock on Arnold coming in just for the hit. I, I mean, he had a really good opportunity to just, you know, kick down into that corner there, Marius Dormon, because there was no one covering. And if that would have been just, just just poked down into that corner, it would have been a great opportunity for Toulon to actually sort of, you know, go dancing off down and trying to collect and I, scoop I, it I up. I agree there was, a, there was a kick space, but I was just, I'm really concerned about finding out Fianunuka's, uh, whether he's 100%. He didn't stay on the outside. Usually, yeah, you see the strapping on his leg yeah. there. He didn't push up on the outside and take the space that was left for him. And uh, yeah, real question mark uh, over his um, over his physical state at the moment because that didn't seem to be like the the final nuka. And everybody knows down, uh, you know, from the Crusaders, from his time with yeah. the All Blacks and uh, during the World Cup. There's a guy who would have ripped that space up. Big time. And, um, seemed very hesitant there. And, uh, well, I'll hopefully get him into the shed at halftime, see how he is. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully I'm, I'm reading it wrong. But um, we'll see if they attack out to his wing now. This could be an opportunity. Scrum collapses. They go again. Fix your part. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Ça. Ouais, bien, les gars. Ouais, ouais, mais venez me voir. Venez les deux pour arriver. La première mêlée était magnifique. Après, il n'y a rien eu de bon. First try was fantastic. After that, nothing's been good. Do you understand? We need to sort this out. <laughs> Interesting, though, that he's come back onto the loose head side of the scrum. He's given two penalties against Toulon on the tight head side, and he's stood himself over there. Now, this time, he's come back on the loose head side. And all the, pro the problems he's been, been penalising have been on that other side of the scrum. We had one penalty against Lau Lala earlier, but... Uh, Interesting for the referee. We'll see how we get on here. Just over two minutes to go before the referee blows the half-time whistle. Now he's going to come around on the tight head side. Oh, he's got a yellow card. Both of them. Off they go. Rodrigue Netti. Emmerich Setiano. So we're going to have uh, Becca Giyashvili, the Georgian who will come on, and David Anu, who's the uh, the American international tight head. And uh, we'll see how they fare for the last couple of minutes. There he is, uh, Becca Giyashvili, and uh, for all of our Georgians who are watching, of course, uh, familiar face, wonderful, uh, wonderful, strong tight head prop. Salavasio Tolofu has been sacrificed. And there's Danny Priso just making sure that the George and the former uh, Spartak Moscow uh, tight head prop played for Chambry. Came through the mountains, he did, um, in, 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 in Savoie before he actually found his place playing for, uh, for, for Toulon, of course. Gelon's been sacrificed for Toulouse. A hard, very strong. And. Uh, a technical tight head is Gigashvili. And the American is uh, quality as well. Well, he's going to need to be here. We'll see they're packing down. Uh, Toulouse, has deci uh, Toulouse has decided only to put seven down against them, so they want to have that extra defender in the back line, which I can understand. Opportunity now to Toulon to try and reassert some ascendancy yeah. through this scrum. Can they get the penalty before half time? This is, what this, is, this is what they'll be going for. Gee, that's a great hit on that far side, though, by uh, Toulouse. Oh, off the back it comes, finally. There's Charles Olivon smashing, crashing into, into the obstacles in front. Ben White gets the ball out of gas, really. There's the, uh, uh, the Toulon backs just lighting it up with that man, Tuinkuru. Again, it's Gigash, really. Charging again into this Toulouse defence. Ben White is going to kick it through. That's a nice little kick. It's a cheeky little kick. And uh, there's nothing he can do but try and... Uh, oh, he's flung it back in, King Horn. And there's a wild pass. But, of course, when Ramos does that, it always finds someone. And his name is Dupont. Clearance kick successfully out the other side of the paint. Crazy stuff. Great nudge in behind there. That's White just on the left foot there. Good pressure through from VI. I thought, they, uh, thought King Horn here would have given this up and gone into touch. But then, you know... Such as the Toulouse way, is it? No, give it a rip. Let's just keep it going here. See what happens. Get out of jail. It's just in their DNA, isn't it? I mean, well, you know, it's... I think trainings would be fun to watch them. <laughs> see what's going on down there, because uh, I'm sure some of the touch games they have and everything else, there'll be some crazy stuff going on. But uh, you admire them. You well, one, admire them. One of the players who uh, has a look at this line out. Oh, he's again, Charles Olivon, just making sure that that is a Toulon ball. Look at this drive. It's a, a well-structured driving ball with Danny Priso, but there was a player in front of a, the ball carrier, exactly. and that was where it became an issue. Be became a new mall, and uh, yeah, Priso, that's... Priso took off as in front, connected in front. Danny Priso just getting disconnected, and it's just, you know, the moment when you've got something good going and then it gets spoiled when you've got momentum, when you've got the force, you've got the right players in position. All it needs is a little moment of madness where you disattach, but they've still got possession and they kick the ball out. Oh, touch has gone... had a shocker here. It's called half time. It's uh, <laughs> half time here at the stadium, and uh, it's an interesting battle that's taking place here because it's still Toulon who. For the next few minutes, the Toulouse and supporters trying to make some noise.
Here we go with Thomas Ramos getting the game back underway. The clearance kick there coming from Marius Dumont. Takes the ball up towards the halfway line. We're at the 40. Here we go. Let's see. There you go. We got oh, seven minutes. Sorry. Uh, still plenty of time for these uh, uh, before the players come back onto the pitch. Line out. They're going short every time now. So well, at least they got the win on that one. We've got light drizzle falling here at the moment. Go, go. So some things are a little bit trickier to handle the ball. But of course, this man here, he's a motor, isn't he, Peter Aki? Strong charge. Oh, spillage. The ball's been dropped. Uh, the referee surely has to react. And he does. Cyril Bai. Cyril Bai came on. It was um, for Rodrigue Netti, of course, the loose head prop. Emmerich Setiano, the tight head prop. So it's Becca Gigashvili who's come on. Momentarily, before we're back to 15. Good line out win for Richie Arnold. But afterwards. And like that, uh, good bit of work there. I think it was Olivon who's just uh, getting his mitts in there. Yeah, totally. Just to, you know, just to, just doing enough, isn't it? That's what it's about. Just doing enough to disrupt. Begin to lose, opting to pack down. Only seven against the eight here. Interesting. Um, yeah, I go back to your point, Robbie. In the first half, you're talking. You know, we, we chatted quite a bit about Antoine Dupont. It's been discreet again, though, hasn't it? You know, yeah. I, you know, no, I don't want to. Yeah, brilliant rugby player. We all, um, Amazing. everyone, you know, but. Doesn't seem to be as, as present as always. We put that one out on the floor, and this is not the start Dan Bigger wanted to give his team into the second half. On the back of, on the back of a decent scrum. It's another opportunity though them to try and put some pressure on the uh, try and put some pressure on the line out. I think conditions, this type of rain only makes it, it's not really heavy rain, it's just a, just enough moisture on the ball just to make things a little bit more tricky. Help focus the mind. Line outs taken well by Cross. Cyril Bai makes it available. Mubaka, well, he does really well on Twan Dupont going around the outside. This is where he's dangerous. Well, he's done really well to just uh, swerve between a couple of defenders. Ramos picks it up. The and crowd to get over the game line. They? The crowd really want they really want him to to, to be but present as well. Richie Arnold nearly dropping the ball. Absolutely safe. Kick over the top. That is just not a good kick. Dan Bigger responds with something a little bit deeper, just behind Ramos, picked up and driven into touch. Great work by Bigger there, opting to stay back in the backfield there. Read the kick nicely. This is where the crowd started to get excited. They go, here he is, he's in the game now. I think yeah. good work there from the big Georgian Becker. He is really coming across there, making a good tackle. Chris Tolafua. Olivon, once again, makes it available just to. Uh, you can just see that the uh, the locks getting in there, really trying to get in, but they're coming in from the side. But that's um, that's good work because the timing was super important. They need to get in really quickly on the ball carrier and get those tentacles wrapped around. And that's exactly what they did. Just made it a little bit more complicated for them to set up that driving wall. Yeah, they did. They, they certainly caused it. Olive ever since he had the kick in the head, he's had about four or five outstanding actions. Great line-out work. But again, gee, when Laulala came in from, I'd like to see that penalised. And there's a lot of arms been changing positions here. We've got to have consistency on this ruling. And... Uh, well, I think most people agree that Moors are an absolute mess to referee today, just <laughs> because of uh, you know, the spinning through and everyone uh, working their way through the middle. But uh, that one there, another opportunity just to sort of just build pressure. And they're not just not taking it, just keep letting um, to lose off the hook here again. So between uh, the 40th and the 60th minutes in the t in the, the first nine rounds of the Chop Captors, Toulouse have uh, conceded 77 points. Whereas Toulon only 33. So this is a good hunting ground for points for the visitors. If they can, uh, well, just remain a little bit organized and not uh, lose possession and make silly mistakes. Yeah, now the, you know, now the chance again for uh, Toulouse to turn the screw on the scrum here. Referees change sides, going across the other side. 
too long opt-in as well to hold that one extra defender with the back line. So seven against eight. Flexion. Um, scrum penalty uh, number seven. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned yeah. for Toulon now because Adrian Marbo, the uh, the referee, is very much. You know, we've already had the two props who've been sent off. I think that you know Toulon are going to be got to. They're, they're on the Mr. Marbo's radar. There's no doubt about it. Oh, I totally agree. And it's been yeah, it's been on the. You know, he's moved over. Changing sides, he's penalising both sides of the scrum, but seven against eight is always going to be a bit big ask, and there's been a lot of movement going on. You know, just to, I, I think the front row hasn't been settled the whole game, the scrummaging, but it's going to be disappointed if this game's going to be decided on the number of penalties are given at scrum time, because I think these two teams are better than that. Movaka. Rumat does really well. This is this is better. This is better organized. Danny Priso trying to get his hands on Movaka. It's on to Dupont. On to Dupont. Look at is that that is fantastic play. Dupont has been snagged. That is not coming out surely. That's great work. Very very good work. So Dupont tried to snatch and get the ball out, but you just saw a hand coming over. It was. Um, it was big uh, Swans uh, Rabaj uh, coming over the top there. And again, the swimming through the ruck, uh, through the mall situation there. Well, some places in the world it's going to be penalised, other places it's not. Some referees will penalise in the top 14 and some won't. And on that occasion there, changing binds, coming over the top. Uh, he did very well. The ball looked to be available. And do you say, is that out at that point there? How are you interpreting that? That's open to, and there he comes over the top. Extremely strong, did extremely well, didn't he? The top, he was through the middle. He was coming through the middle, I think. And I think that that's what the referees want to see, you know, because that's one of the biggest uh, and then uh, the highly penalised villain offence that you actually see more often than ever. Really surprised here again. We see this change of strategy of Toulouse packing down only seven players defensively. I think they'd want to go down eight against eight here and really try and have a crack at the scrum. You're coming on the back of four penalties in a row, or three penalties, I think, in a row. I think you'd want to have a go at the scrum here rather than conceding an easy out for, um, for too long. Particularly the, the situation on the field where you are, you're so high up the field that your backfield cover, you can still control. You're not under a real danger that they're going to just throw two or three missed passes and get it out wide. I don't yeah. see that happening. And particularly the ball being a little bit more slippery now. You'll be able to control your defence and get across. So, interesting tactical decision here. You want to get it in, you want to get it out as quickly as possible or try and, and win it. Here comes That's the a pressure. good scrum. There you go. You see? That's, That's a, it's too easy. It's too easy. That, 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 you know, like, you'd expect more from the Toulouse bench, the coaching, maybe on the field, the way they're feeling, the way the scrum's going. I, I expect you've got to go eight against eight there. You're down there, you've got to put the pressure on, you've got to try something rather than that's an easy out. He's going to knock it 30, 40 metres down the field, line out, and now you're taking the pressure again. So um, uh, they got that one wrong. And they knew it as well, didn't they? It was a big effort by the second rowers, and we'll see Olivon holding that one in. And yeah, Shalong's not happy. I think even, he, he, even he's agreeing with me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Julien Marchand's going to come on for Pietro Movaca, hence the reason. Um, it's been a while since he last played. He played in the final uh, in the top captors against La Rochelle back in June, and then 10 minutes in the opener of the Rugby World Cup against uh, New Zealand at the Stade de France. A muscle injury is kept in sideline. He's back, and they are greatly appreciative of his presence, of course, here at the stadium. Here we go, the ball comes back, and uh, Dan Bigger. And out of the 22, from uh, that man, Matisse Lebel. Would that be his first touch tonight? Carried the ball once. Yeah, I, I think. think he's probably, yeah, probably. He's very few touches. Good cover, though, in the backfield by him on that occasion. Did well. 
I think before the second try, it was Toulon 73% possession, 27 only for Toulouse. Just to give you an idea, but uh, it's turned around a little bit because of the back end of the uh, the first half. Of course, is. yep. And now a little bit more possession now. Marchand. It's going to be a big, important line out. This is. Once they find that, uh, you know, if, if just just find the uh, the automatic mythology of how he's trying to do things and. That lineup goes well. Dupont gets the ball out. Rumat into the hands of Ramos. Ramos out wide. Here he is. The, the very fast and furious uh, Delib. Toulon are really tight in defense here. They get, they get exposed if they can. Well, that's just twice they've turned it back on the inside. Oh, disappointed there with the attack there from Toulouse. The defense was extremely tight. Jack Willis about to come on. He's been a great player, hasn't he? Wonderful, he's wonderful player. Honestly, he's uh, and he's fitted in so well, you know, in his first season. Uh, hence the reason why he just said, yeah, I'm going to stay for a little bit longer, I think, you know, because um, he is, he wants to learn, and he wants to learn the Toulouse way. But he's also integrating himself into the whole setup, understanding exactly what Toulouse is all about, learning the language. That's all they ask for you down there, you know. And the, try and learn the system and be open learn the language, integrate yourself. He's definitely done that, and he's well, playing I, some I great rugby. You can words. see that he's enjoyed I think himself. those are key words for any foreigner coming over who's going to play in the top 14, that, uh, you know, it's about respecting what's what's going on in whichever situation, wherever you may find yourself. And uh, Or the Pro D2. And, uh, yeah, well, as well, we're right down into uh, National 1, National 2. For sure. And... Um, I think foreigners have a real responsibility when they come over to accept that, and that's that's part of the richness of playing rugby in France for uh, for the foreigners. And uh, speaking to Jimmy Gopeth down in Aix en Provence uh, last week, he's really regretting he didn't come over earlier in his career. Waited till he was about 40. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Gee, he's still in great shape and playing great rugby as well. Wonderful player. Well, it's Toulouse on the attack. There he Dupont, goes. Dupont, he's off. Oh, he just couldn't drop it in the basket for Abarasi. Picked up and grounded there by Ramos, but it's a little bit too late, I'm afraid. I think he knows. Oh, everybody, no, everybody just wait, just wait for just to rip one action completely. There it was, and just, just couldn't quite free up that left hand. He was just trying to get the offload out there. No, we well, yeah, two. It's great play by Smaley though. He yeah, just puts his really well. Yep. So he puts his left it. hand on Dupont's arm, so it's not actually a mistake by Dupont. He wanted to drop it in the basket. The basket was waiting for him, but Smaley got there first. Well, Toulon need to clear their area well here because you just sense, you just sense this Toulon that the pressure's building here. Yeah. Toulouse are coming, and I think Toulon sense it. That's great scrummaging by both sides. Stable. He wants to get the shaky shot. now. Shaky now. Don't keep it in the hands of the referee. He's going to go. A Toulouse oh, is dear. going Toulouse's way. Trying to understand that. Well, he's, he's actually blaming Bruce Devoe. The, the loose head prop of just uh, angling in. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's calling it. Oh, that's disappointing. I, I thought it was an excellent scrum. No one had clear domination, in my opinion, there. But both sides are working so hard. Too, see, long, feel, too long field. They got the They felt that, that there was Laulala going down first. I, I uh, mean, again, has he been? Is that angling in? Yeah. Oh no, you're not happy. I understand. No one's happy. No one really knows what's going on. But I tell you what, you know, we said we didn't want scrums to decide this game. But here's three points, and you know, on the back again, too easy. But you can't charge a penalty. Who was that? Goodness me. I think that was Far Nuka. <laughs> <Yeah. down> <laughs> so, yeah. They move ahead. 15 points to 14. Ramos from the tee. Well, thank goodness he didn't charge it down. If we had to have a Colby situation to get with Ramos getting charged down during the World Cup. It's <laughs> incredible, <laughs> isn't it? That, that, that caused, but uh, Vianuka not within his rights to charge that one down at all. I think that rule applies all around the world. 
Dupont, Dupont around the outside, pushes off Ribbons, runs into a little bit of trouble, a little bit too much. Well, he gets the ball into the hands of Aki. Of course, it's Charles Olivon who brings down his uh, French international teammate. Mir Fu. Crashing the big colossal Australian, now French international, part of the Six Nations team for their uh, Fabien Galtier. There's no doubt about that, I'm sure. That's a great nudge. That bounced on the right side of the paint. That's really well taken, that is, from Marius Dumont. Outstanding placement from uh, Dupont, though. Strong carry. Willis can't be allowed to be in there. God, Willis. Goodness me. He's, he's, just a, he's uh, colossal as well, isn't I, he? I, I, yeah, I'm sorry to say, that I think the referee's losing a bit of control here. He's getting really, you know, he's not happy with the way he's getting a lot of chat out there in his ear from both sides. Just came off for Marshawn. It's not a problem. Picked up there by Fanga Anuku. I've got numbers. Good opportunity here. It's uh, Jack Singleton. Another English international. Well, penalty. Well, he said that wasn't deliberate. That, yeah, well, if ever I've seen a mismatch, right, it's between these two. Mia Fu and White. Well, maybe got tipped up there. Yeah. It looked to me like Francois Cross had gone in with a no arms tackle, yeah. causing him to go over. Then he's saying, well, no, it wasn't done on purpose, and he landed, and it, was, it wasn't, a, you know, wasn't a tip tackle in that situation. But um, TMO might get involved. This frustration is coming about you know, because of the refereeing, because there's just there's been too much. Too much niggle at scrum time. The moves are untidy. The breakdown, he's not refereeing. He hasn't policed anything, really, from the start of the game. There you go. It's, um, it's a reckless tackle. Oh, now he's called it. He said there was nothing wrong with the tackle. Yeah, that was the reason, I think. Yeah, you I know, think he's got the call he quickly, from the, yeah, yeah, from the linesman. Yeah, someone's given him a call. Because I, I think we said, this, they go in there. Oh, goodness me. I, yeah, that, that, a year ago in rugby, that's a red card. Yeah, you're right. He's on his head. He's been lifted. Um, is it Barisi's gone through with the action of carrying? I didn't see it from uh, yeah, inside. Well, that was the kick from Dupont earlier. No, uh, Dan, that's not out. Play on. Two presidents. I'm surprised the video ref hasn't had more to say about that. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely. Dan Baker delivers. And that's a good kick. Excellent Too long kick. move ahead. The rain a little bit heavier now, as you can see. So in these conditions, exit strategy has got to be spot on. You clear your lines nicely. You're going to have a good set piece. Just do the basics extremely well to stay in this one. We've got 25 minutes. You feel there's got a lot going to happen in this 25 minutes. Dupont makes the Ooh, ball available for Lolala. Oh, it's a wild pass picked up here by Tonguru. Villiers, they want to move that quickly. I don't know if that's the right decision there from Villiers. That's oh, not the right decision from Villiers. Can't play. Guess who? Guess who? Dupont. Standing up in the second half. A lot more presence about him in the second half there. And he's read that play beautifully. And again, we talk about uh, Villiers in the first half, didn't he? That you feel the action always has to finish with him. There's no play after him. And that's a, another occasion where he's taken something on he didn't really need to. If he'd got into that nine position and made the pass, you felt they could have kept it in hand. Yeah, but if you're going to kick, don't kick it high down there. You well, want to kick it down. Space. He's got to go down onto the ground. He's got to be a low kick going towards yeah. the line. That wasn't a chip to, to no, a no, player. Was a, there was, was no one there. No, no, no. It was, a, it was a kick to absolute nothing. You're quite right. Line outs. You just feel that. Look just, at that. Five yeah. lost line outs for Toulouse. Yeah. Well, oh, he's done really well, isn't he? To pick that up, it goes backwards. Singleton picks it up. Tries to turn around and burrow his way into this Toulouse defence. Made this, safe. This is where they've got to be accurate. Nick White sends it high. That's on the money. Oh, he's uh, he tries to pirouette intelligently, Matisse Labelle. 
Ball comes out. There's uh, the kick there coming from Kinghorn. He's been quite uh, quiet, isn't he? Uh, Kinghorn in the second half. That's not a bad kick, is it? That's Didn't look very good, good Dumont. Marius yep. Dumont. Yep. Uh, they're covering the backfield well. And yeah, but they certainly would have been talking about that, of, you know, just not letting anything bounce in the backfield. And so Alfie about to come on. Well, this is obviously going to be a change for bigger. I don't know, I think Big has been quite good out there tonight for them. He's, you know, he hasn't been exceptional, but he's been good at, you know, seems you know, getting them in the plane in the right areas, whereas Irvay's, he's not going to, do, he doesn't bring that. Well, he's, I think that he's just, he's, he's kept that stability in the back line and made the connection really well. Another mistake at line out. Number six. Walking on the throw. That's just a mistake, isn't it? Nearly. Uh, We're going to put this put this one up in the air to contest. Oh, Interesting. Too Need far. to get there. That's touch gone too far. too far, isn't it? Surely. Well, oh, has it? Well, Blair Kinghorn does Outstanding super well. Take. Gee, what a chase that was! It all happened really quickly. It was fine. You know, just came from nowhere. Yeah, but did you see? But did you see with the players who were just getting in the way? You know, I mean, do you call them obstacles in the no, modern game or not? Sort of, well, we just got to escort back. But so long as you don't change your line of running, you know, that's intelligent play. We'll see what's going to happen. It's got to go back up, surely. Oh, oh he's, he's just under a little four. bit of pressure, but he can grab that. It's anybody's ball. It's been picked up there wonderfully <inaudible> by uh, Geelong. <inaudible> yeah, Geelong's done really well. Great awareness. <inaudible> Dupont, now watch out. The defensive line needs to be back. There's the kick from Ramos. He spotted it intelligently. Big is in position. Oh, that's not a good kick, is it? Well, they'll take it. They'll take it because uh, Ramos could have made a lot more. He could have made a much better effort than that one there. And uh, Hervé comes on. Former brief fly half. Dupont putting the pressure on. 20 minutes to go. Who are you picking? Oh, I, I don't. I don't pick. No. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. To be honest with you, um, all it takes is a moment that will trigger, that will detonate. You know, uh, a flurry of activity from one of the two teams. Toulouse probably in a more favourable position as we see the list of players who are out injured still. Um, but, you know, if, if Toulon are, are well organised yep. and structured Agreed. and they continue to orchestrate and they don't, they get rid of the ball and, and just as quickly as possible in a good, strong, well organised way, then they are capable of beating Toulouse here. You feel they may they have got the edge, don't you? But again, it's just the, the doubt about the line-out. And it's just the inconsistency of the referee that always scares me when a game is within a, one, is within a penalty. When it's a two-point game, it just 20 minutes is a long time. There's going to be a lot more penalties so between now sure. and uh, the end of the game. But uh, where the game's going to be played, Hervé, who's come on, is a very good kicking game. There's no True. doubt about that. True. Um, and is a very good goal kicker. Absolutely. So they've lost absolutely nothing by with Bigger going off. No, and he's younger and he's, you know, he's, uh, yeah. But Bigger's done super well. He's, he's, been, he's been great out there. This is solid. Marshall at the back. Loves this position. Dupont. Where's this going now? Aki. Ramos. Well oh, there's a slip. Well there's a slip. And that's going to go out. It's been picked up. Well, this is a little bit of a... Ah, uh, yeah, it's going to be a scrum five for Toulouse. The pressure cooker situation of trying to dance out of your own... Buying your own try, try line, of course, against Toulouse, in Toulouse. Yeah, but an outstanding play there. Firstly, the, uh, the drive, the catch and drive was outstanding play. Dupont, the pass, slippery ball, the conditions, hits the wide pass for Aki, and then Aki's timing there is excellent. Yeah, we had... Uh, Dermot, go, he, he went down, slipped. Did so down. well to get back there. Did extremely he? well to get back and uh, tried his best to get himself out of a um, very, very tight situation. Huge numbers there from Toulouse, and you're going nowhere. And now we come down to the scrum. So where we didn't want it to come down to, we're here. 
an opportunity and they will really be looking to turn the screw. Yeah, and I, honestly, I think that it's all going to happen up here where, you know, where the scrum takes place because it's it's been pretty shambolic, isn't it, for Toulon in the scrum? Well, for both sides. Both, both sides, sides have yeah. penalised heavily. Uh, Toulon of um, you know, on the receiving end of it, the back end of uh, certainly of the first half and the start of the second half, then they won a penalty back and a free kick. So it's been very much uh, a mixed bag. Well, round 11 next weekend. Uh, the match is taking place on Friday, Saturday and Sunday the 31st. One match on the 31st on uh, New Year's Eve Castro against Perpignan at 2 p.m. local time. And then before that, four matches on the Saturday the 30th and then two on Friday. Scrum time. Big scrum. Ah! Oh, he's come out, it's there for the taking. Penalty before Willis grounded it. The referee had blown the whistle. Well, it's going to a yellow card penalty try, I'm calling it. You're going to call a yellow card, yellow card penalty, penalty try. try? I'll go for it. They're going to go for a scrum again. This will be a, it'll be a penalty for Toulon. Huge call, Robbie. <laughs> And I'll call it. It's going to go to the, the yellow card's going to be for Bika. <laughs> because the ref is not happy with all the chat coming from him. Flexion. <laughs> Pushing before the um, yeah. before it's been set, before the ball's going in. This is Marshall's uh, probably one, you know, a strong point of his game. We spoke about Malvaka earlier, his power, his explosiveness. He loves this stuff. Really good scrummaging hooker. Flexion. Lié. Tupon. Feeds the ball. It's gone around. It's gone around. They got the advantage. Tupon gets the ball out. Peter Aki doesn't make the pass. Gets caught out. Villiers with the tackle. Still, momentum takes them down. And Dupont just setting it up. They got something they want to play. There's two players in offside position. They are under a lot of pressure here. Well, he had the ball up. The player wasn't offside. The defence from too long. Willis hands on the ball now. Here's El Mirfu getting the ball out. Ramos. Ramos gets the ball out. Blair King on the ball. Tucks the ball out wide. There he is in the corner. Mattis Labelle. Try number three this season. And a big shriek of joy comes out of the wingers. Mouth as he celebrates and nudges Toulouse ahead 2017 with 15 minutes to go here at the stadium. Well, I was calling it was going to come from the penalty try, but no, it was some great hands and great depth from the back line again. And it was Kinghorn involved once again with the long pass. Great finish from LaBelle. Hardly touched the ball all night. And again, Kinghorn with a decisive pass. Picking uh, LaBelle up out there on the wing there. Really well taken try. Created by the depth that they were able to play off uh, Miafu there in that situation. Well played by the Toulouse back, uh, the back line. The back three in particular, really well played. And uh, again, able to play with a free ball on the back of the dominance that they're starting to exert at scrum time. So uh, nudges them in front, 20 points to 17. With a very, very tough kick to come for a guy who is an outstanding goal kicker. It's perfectly executed there by uh, Thomas Ramos. The extras go in the swag bag as they move 22-17 ahead. But Blair Kinghorn's pass, that's the second that he's produced. That's uh, the first one went straight over the shop into the hands of Dimitri Delib. On this occasion, the other winger, Matty Slabel. That's fantastic passing that is from the Scottish fullback. 
Jello. They're finding a little bit of uh, this swagger oh, now to lose. Vier did really well. He had to be offside there, referee, because the ruck was set, surely. Two steals in a row. Oh, I'm not sure about that option either. Well, that's not a bad kick, actually. No, but <laughs> no, well, there weren't many They've options. They've got to build pressure. They've got to carry. That's what, that, where they were dominating in that first 20 minutes, when they looked at their best too long, carrying the ball. As we'll just see here, this was outstanding play by Vier. Look at him get back here, get a clear release, gets over the ball, hands on the ball straight away see, and wins it. That should have been... It was offside, should've, definitely. Should have been a penalty. The outside line was set. So, yep. uh, but anyway, they... Got a decent outcome from it. Well, that could have been three points. It could have been a penalty um, that could have been uh, yeah, could have taken from there. A six lineouts lost for Toulouse. Marchand. Oh, it's been won again. Well, a flick back. It will be another lineout for Marchand. Touched by a Toulon eight. Uh, there's no White need to complain. Of that decision. No, he's, he's seen something else. So, to be fair, oh, I, I, yeah. Into, the, into yep. the black hand on the way through. Good contest, though. They're competing extremely well, and they've got to. They're down here now. They've got to be going up. They don't want to stay on the ground. They just don't want to be giving... I, I don't believe they don't want to give Toulouse any easy outs. And easy outs are not competing and, uh, you know, giving away dumb penalties. So it's, it's got to be competing here. Compete in the air and put pressure on the throw. Francois Cross doing well that on that occasion. It's just sure we've got uh, Stevan Abadi come on as well. 13, well, 12 minutes to go. Dupont, Dupont, exit kick. Nicely taken by Dumont. Now, where's this going to go for Ramos? Ramos. Beautiful strike. See, they're just taking the pressure off themselves because they know that with a five-point lead in this situation, they've kind of got the upper hand, they've kind of got the fans behind them, and they know that, you know, it's up to them now to sort of, you know, just continue what, what they're doing. I, I, I think Toulon have got the, um, you know, they've got the good side to be able to put pressure on, and they have just got it back into this men mentality of dominating the tackle, dominating the contact area and carrying hard, and... Uh, yeah, they've just gone away from that the last two or three positions I've had, and now, oh dear, closing the gap. Oh, they're coming in before the throw. He's really got uh, Gigas really in his, in his sights when you're calling that free kick up. That's such a technical thing for the uh, guy at the tail of the line out. Gelon with a charge, Marsh on this time. Mr. Buddy, just uh, Mr. Ban Abadi getting the, the tackle in. Oh, it's Tolafour just getting taken off the ball. He, Got his hands on it. They're looking a lot stronger. Little chip into the corner. It's a cheeky one. Let it go. Yes, he's done well there, Domon. I think Hugo Moller would like them to hold on to the ball. I think that's the that's the, that the, get the perfect message. translation. Yes. yes, thank you. And rather than taking the scrum, they've, they've got the option here of taking the 22 if they choose to. So they've chosen to take the 22, drop out. Make a decent strike on this, get a good chase on the front line, cover the backfield, that's a beautiful kick. They want this put back up with interest. That's a good, two, that's a good kick. LaBelle, too. LaBelle, this is a one-on-one -on -one battle. Oh, it's just gone forward so it's been picked up Peter Aki does really well now is an opportunity got numbers out wide if they can get it out Ramos Ramos gets the ball out oh Kinghorn does another perfect pass over the top picked up by Barassi Barassi brought down by Ribbons Ramos Ramos Kinghorn into the hands of Delib. good strong tackle big hit from Adomo Willis this time Dupont digs Big boys now into the fray. Into the last 10 minutes we go. Gelon, we know what he can do. Devastating. Jack Willis this time with a big charge. Oh, he does really well. Five meters out. Miafu's the next one to go, surely. No, it's uh, Cyril Bai. Need to get out of there. That's it. Dupont. Looking left, looking right, looking for options. Little spin there from that man, Gelon. Oh, it's nicely done. Ramos, acceleration, he's surely gonna go 
Oh, oh, just held up short. Dupont, Dupont checks it out. Peter Aki still held up. Extraordinary. Hasn't gone down just yet. We go back to the penalty. Looking for a, more than just a high tackle, and, a, and a, they want a yellow card on, a, on Matty Slabel. I, uh, I don't know why Hugo Moller is asking here for the scrum. Kick three points, get two scores in front. If you want to, you know, start thinking, you, you're not going to get a bonus point. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's a better decision. <laughs> Yeah, just put the game to bed. I mean, you, know, you take exactly whatever points yeah, you can. Yeah, totally. You know, they, you know, the first 20 minutes are totally outgunned in this game, and then, you know, 10 minutes of the second half, they've been outplayed. There you go. That's sorry. It was, um, it was just... The referees handled that really well, and I don't know why they're asking for more. That's not yellow card. There's nothing... Uh, no, no, no. We don't need to have the reactions of everybody. Setariki to Nkuvu with the... Uh, just grabbing the shirt around the neck a little bit and sort yeah, of tugging it. Tug it in. It's, a, it's a definitely a penalty. That's, we know it. the rules are there. There you go. Be respected, adhered to. I just. just Ramos look at, kicks look at, the penalty 25 17. Pre game, we mentioned the importance of Peter Aki to the side, and when he plays well, Toulouse play well. He's really been good tonight. I, I think the only false move he's made was not scoring the try there. Just yeah, in that, in that, that's true. When he got turned onto his back there in the end goal area. But um, he's been really, really good tonight. Couple of changes, Pula Fasalili. He's uh, going to come on, and we've also got Alban Placina, former Beerus player. Manny, uh, Anthony Gelon goes off. Placina on to replace him. Here he is. Chris Tolafour coming back on for Singleton. Just had a little bit of a breather. And uh, Jules Donglo coming on for White. Game certainly not won at this stage, is it? But they've taken, you know, they've taken a good step towards yeah, it. But, for uh, sure. Things can happen pretty quickly, as we, as we well know. Decent catch drive here and some good play out of the... Uh, out of Toulon, but um, I just feel Toulon have taken themselves out of this with the limited possession they've had in the uh, in the second half. Their kick options haven't been the best, I don't feel, and they haven't built the pressure that they needed to. Oh, he's hurt his uh, elbow a little bit. I wonder if he's uh, can I go off. Well, Chuta Wanangolo, wonderful player. He really is a he's smiling assassin. He? He's totally such a expected. funny person as well. Tolafua, there it is, Ribbons, his uh, Donglo. Oh, spillage there from Smiley. Picks up there by Placine, and this is where they are super dangerous to lose. Barassi just uh, straightening, straightening up and going straight into the Toulouse wall. Placine picks it up. Oh, he's been flattened there. There's a player down. Hope he's okay. I think it's, um, it's, it's Domo. Domo. He yeah. seems to be all right, but. Uh, little change of direction. David Enu, the American tight head, Dupont. Martian on the ground, Dupont gets it out to Ramos. Ramos, another kick over the top, a little cheeky kick. Oh, it's taken a wicked bounce, and it got up. Oh, he's just kicked that out uh, under pressure from Dimitri Delib. Horrible that bounce. Kick. Horrible kick. Flew like the old wounded duck, didn't it? It was an absolute yeah. floater. It was drifting around him, and he hit it. He hit it there intentionally like that. He kicked it right in the belly of the ball, so he'd get that floaty effect on it. One of Conrad that didn't know where it was. It was drifting all around the place. That should be a Toulouse ball. He, he took it out, and he did it. referees are telling him, but no. Well, he didn't do it on purpose, according to the referee. That's the reason. Looks like he just needed out, but in any case, who am I to officiate? Big charge. Charge coming in from Francois, of course. 
There's the uh, Marchand into the hands of bye bye to Dupont. It's all French, an all French affair. Oh, it's King Horn once again, just chucking the ball out, squeezing the ball out wide, and it's just what he does so well. Dupont Placine. Placine. Told that it can't go any further than that. Big charge from Willis. Vaseline this time. The Jackal is it down, that's going to be a turnover ball. And that is brilliantly done there. Chris Tolafour just coming straight back on and doing the business. Sorry, it's um, it's Setaraki, uh, Tokivulu. Gene Willis does well here, hands through the tackle, and then the big man, Vasily, falling, but just not really protected. You know, didn't fall the right way. He needed to be, land more on that ball and, and work on the ground. Decent presentation, and he gave access to, and I think it was Tolafu who got yeah, over the top Yeah, it was Tolafu, finally. Yes. Yeah, who got over the top of that. And Tolafu, he had access to the ball too quickly. Vasily could have taken just a, a split second more, work on the ground, and then made sure... Going into contact, you want to make sure you get that ball back with good presentation. Wasn't the case, but outstanding defensive work from Tolafua. Tukabaris, the Argentinian centre, coming on to replace Babassi. Oh, it goes out wide. Who's going to pick it up? Villiers. Well, Kinghorn's just uh, lifting him. He's, he's, you have to let go of a player who's uh, put his knee on the ground. That's a little bit messy, that is, and there's... Uh, a knock on Toulouse pick up possession and I can think that we can comfortably say that Toulouse are going to run out winners now yeah without it yeah Toulouse have definitely got this one now with three minutes to go they know um, Toulon are not scoring twice and certainly they've been they've been just very inaccurate in the last 20 minutes here whether that's because of the uh, the Toulouse and pressure or whether that's just because of the uh, just the forcing the play a little bit, knowing, and they haven't had, an, they haven't maintained position for long enough to build any pressure. Right. So it's, uh, you know, it's a bit of a double-edged sword that one. Now they're trying to play, and it's, um, you know, wrong areas of the field, and to lose, uh, just, just stepping up and physically, they're winning the race around the corner. To lose, they're dominating them physically, and it's. Um, well, going to be a, a long yeah. trip home for the boys from Toulon. If they, soon as they don't, you know, manage to sneak three points to get a bonus point here, they they probably, you know, on the, the scheme of the game, do they deserve to come away with a bonus point? You feel they do. They've contributed enough to this game. Great opportunity. The ball's been kicked forward under a lot of pressure. Now it's Kinghorn. Kinghorn, he needs to kick it, and he kicks it sumptuously. But what's coming up now? Here's an opportunity. Picked up by Villiers. Villiers, the jackal is there. Penalty. Here's well, your opportunity. Is this for in three. kicking range? Well, you have to take the three here. Hervé's got a massive boot on him. Mignoni's trying to communicate with Enzo Hervé. Ask him, do you feel you can kick it? It's a big, long kick, isn't it, in the rain? Of course he can. It's a bit of, well, the surface this, is outstanding. That's just going to be about getting that plant, that left foot right, holding his balance, get the plant foot right. The distance won't be a problem. And they move. If they get uh, um, a losing point too long, they move to 29 points. They just move above bordeaux Bagel into fourth position. Toulouse will be in seventh position on 27. So... I think pre-game, given what... Toulouse were coming into this game with their form and everything else. And the way Toulon have been going with the injuries and everything else. If you offered them... Is up, it coming around? Yes, is it, it coming is. around? No, oh, it's, not. it's just... Post. It hit the post. Skim the right side of the... Uh, outside of the right post. So unlucky. Got the distance. Yeah. We'll just have a look here. Lovely strike. He just drifted away at the end. He had plenty of distance. Just shaved the wrong side of the upright. He's a bit disappointed with that. You feel that, you know, that uh, they would have signed for a bonus point, defensive bonus point. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Into this game. Anyway, they've got to get it back inside the opposition half again, and that's gone backwards. Play on. But you want to get it back over halfway. Goodness me, the years. That's sloppy play. You want to keep it in play as well. Yeah, you want to keep it in play, and you've got to build play. You need to build it. Probably they're going to have to win two penalties, I feel, to get down into kicking range. And that means they've got to carry the ball in this area really strong.
Nicely done. Good Abadi getting the ball out. Well, that's for watch out for this man here. Wangolo, wonderful player. Watch Don't out, Willis. Is it, no, he didn't have his hands. He didn't have his hands on the ball. Yes, but unfortunately, fell on his back and exposed the ball. And yep, she's thinking the same thing. Disappointment. But Willis he gets a lot he of the kudos, does he? The ball. You're right. It was a, the referee just awarded so, strong position over the ball. And the ball's been kicked out, and it is Toulouse who gets the get the win tonight. And Toulon walk away without anything after that missed Enzo Elve penalty that just went wide. And the final score here at the stadium: Toulouse 25, Toulon 17. Well. They're probably looking over, looking over and, and saying, well, it could have been a little bit different.